One of those days we were shooting in the middle of an ice lake. As we walking across the ice, and then from far away we hear, Jackie Chan, we love you. And the crew are like, where is it coming from? We're in the middle of a frozen lake in Iceland. He is, he is huge. I mean, I have worked with uh, famous actors before. I think he is one of the, the only that I know uh, that I've worked with that he's famous all over the world. That guy gets stopped anywhere, everywhere in the world. That's James Cho, an assistant director on international productions, films made outside of the Hollywood system for companies in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, with shooting locations, as you heard in Iceland, Dubai, mainland China, you name it. Because after all, if you want to make a movie, you don't have to live in Hollywood. On this episode of Creative Mind, we're going to jump into the world of being an assistant director. And James is going to walk us through a film he worked on and give us some tips on how to work in Paris, how to work in Dubai, how to work in China, and some of the skills he's picked up as an English Mandarin speaking assistant director. And of course, before we get going, please hit subscribe on whatever device you're listening on so you never miss an episode of Creative Mind. Your title is assistant director. Assistant director has kind of this weird idea, you know, you're not directing the film, um, but I mean, how are you, are, are you helping the director or what is it that you're doing as an assistant director? Well, assistant director, we bring the ideas from the creatives and then we bring them to the production. So what we do is we talk to the creatives, we find out what they need, uh, how, how do they plan to accomplish every scene, every shot. And then we bring that to the appropriate departments like the art department, the props, the costume, the makeup, the DP. And then we all sit down, we talk about the plan. What do we need? When do we need it? And uh, that plan ultimately becomes the shooting schedule. So let's, let's get into that. So your shooting schedule, and you, I noticed you haven't talked about actors at all. All right, how, how do actors fit into your role? Are they kind of separate or, or are they the... They are sort of separate. Like their communication is with director directly. Uh, AD is more into, uh, we manage the atmosphere. So we'll deal with the, uh, the background performers. If it's super busy or if it's relaxed or it's whatever the, the atmosphere is, we deal with that kind of stuff. The, the talent, the cast is, they usually deal with director, uh, you know, they have this direct conversation that they, how they feel they, every scene should be performed. You're really project managing at this point. You're, you're, you're not doing a lot of creative work. You're just keeping things moving. Yes, in a way. I mean, if film production is a human body, the, the assistant directors would be like the nerves. You know, we go to, yeah, we go to the heart, we go to uh, the, the liver, we go to the arms, the legs, the, the fingers. We tell them what, we tell them this is, we should be doing this at this time. So let's get to it. And then the body performs well, hopefully. I like that. That's an interesting way of kind of setting it up that, you know, the, the film is a body. Very, I guess, very zen-like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how do you do that? How, how does an assistant director... Uh, make this work? What is it that you're doing to take what a writer, producer, director has essentially bought or packaged the script? What is it that you're doing as an assistant director to make this film live? So we start with breaking down the script, which is, which is hopefully that's a script that it's either locked down or very close. So we break it down into elements, whatever that's written on the script that has, you know, has uh, art into it. Uh, has props, has costumes, have uh, atmosphere. And we break that into essentially lists. And then we bring that list, we bring, you know, then obviously this is like meetings after meetings. We talk about each scene, how the director p feels, if he wants to change anything. And when that's all said and done, you know, we have conversation with prop department. We tell them about the list and they probably have a list of their own. And it's just a lot of, uh, you know, sit down and talk back and forth. And ultimately, hopefully, we all agree on something. And that becomes what we bring to the set on the day. Looking at your films, you've got a lot of movies that are 
uh, Chinese productions. They've got a lot of action in them. They've got a lot of uh, kung fu, guns, car chases, and stuff. So if I've got three guys in a room and they're going to fight with each other, what is it that you're looking for as an assistant director to make that happen? Uh, well, the first time we go into the script and then we see what's required and, and then we, we will talk to the director and the, uh, the stunt coordinator and we find out what's actually required because he, he may change it, he may add to it, or he may think it's not necessary. So in, you know, in the case of these three guys fighting each other, and I will break it down into what's needed. So we have three actors, we have their costumes, and I will talk to the stunt coordinator and the director, find out what do they use to fight, what do they break, and what happens before, during, and after the fight. And do we, then we figure out, do they need stunt double? Do they need uh, wire works? Do we have whatever, you know, props, prop weapons? So with prop weapon, you can always have a real weapon and a fake one and the breakaway ones. So then we figure all that, and again, that becomes lists. So we got the prop list, we have the actress list, what do they wear? what the doubles wear, which is the same thing, but shittier, <laughs> uh, you know, breakaways. Yeah. So we have all that list and ultimately that becomes, uh, so when we all decide it and that will go into the uh, call sheet and then hopefully everybody brings their stuff on the day. <laughs> Cause then, then you've got to deal with the cinematographer as well. So they're going to have their plan. Is that different? Yes, they will have their plan. Yeah, they will have their plan. And ADs are, is the department that has everybody's plan from every department. So they're going to have, for example, DPs, they're going to have, uh, you know, he wants to shoot it with a steady cam. He wants to shoot it with handheld. He wants to shoot it, you know, whatever shooting plans that okay, he lock, have. Yeah, yeah. And that sounds like a lot. So either handheld versus steady cam versus locked down on a tripod, that, that really changes how you do things, correct? I mean, some are easier, some are longer. Steadicam, that, that's multiple passes because rarely they get it in the first pass. Well, Steadicam requires a lot of uh, rehearsals. So, because, uh, you know, then, then, you know, rehearsals, you typically, you rehearse once with, uh, with the cast. You re rehearse one more time with the st stunt double. Or actually, for stunts, you really rehearse the other way around. The designers, the stunt coordinators would design the, the action. So we rehearse with the stunts first. And then the actors come in to mimic what the stunts do. If okay. they're not, part, if they're not already trained, you know, right. sometimes you're not. No, uh, yeah, it's funny. Know. It's funny you mentioned that. That's a it, that's a funny way of looking. At it. It's like no, no, the stunt guys are the one. This is the, what we're seeing. Really, yeah, that would be the times when we go when we do things the other way around. Is the doubles do it first? And that makes sense because because really, when you're when you're in a stunt, you're you're watching action, and then it's just a close up of whoever the pretty face is saying the line, and then. Boom, we cut to action and something breaking and being thrown out a window or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's the, you know, like, but nowadays people are, have higher standard with the stunts. So, you know, a lot more actors and more actors are doing their own stunts now. Uh, but yeah, there has been times where it's everything is shot with stunt doubles and then the actors only come in with a, with the close ups for props where you said you had breakaway stuff and they say, okay, he's going to break a window. He's going to break some furniture. He's going to break a bed. Um, do you just you know lose your mind and negotiate what's going to happen on screen with things? Well, like that? as long as everything is prepped is like, we're only, we're just, we're doing what we agreed on. Then I, it's not a headache for me. It's uh, when all of a sudden the director says, uh, let's break that thing for real. And then I need to find out, like, uh, do we have another one of those? Just what if we only break it, can we break it twice? Or can we break it three times? Then, you know, how is it safe to break that? Is it possible to break that? What do we, do we need to cut it down a little bit for, for us to break? And what else do we need? So that, all that adds to uh, time spent on set. Right. Uh, a, a shooting day is 10, 12 hours, and, and that can go pretty quick. Once you get exactly, rolling. yeah. Especially, we often schedule ourselves to use the entire twelve hours. So all of a sudden, I need another one or two hours. That 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 could be a problematic situation in terms of the production. Because if you go over, 
that's more money spent. That's cost. And that's right. And, and that's that, that's when people start yelling directly at you, or who do they start yelling at when you run out of money? Well, they they will yell at me first, <laughs> and then I will I will I will say, well, this person who is above me says we need to do it. And but but as an AD, you always need approvals. So if we if you know if we know we are going two hours over time, uh, that's the first thing I do is that I would call the production manager and. Uh, say uh, you know tell them the situation and then he gets to decide if we are spending this money for things that weren't prepared for or if he says that sounds like a great idea i'm going to spend another twenty thousand dollars that's fine so it's a, it's his call so that, that 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 must be an interesting phone call to make when it's like you got an extra 50 grand laying around for this crazy idea when it comes to action the, like the chinese films that i that i work for mostly they're they have a bigger budget for action and they're they they're kind of they're already prepared that the director might add things so it's it's this in the it's in the budget you know you were talking really about prep and it sounds like it's a lot of paperwork being an assistant director, what kind of, what is all this prep that you're doing and all this paperwork you're generating to make a film run? Well, once you start breaking down the script, you have all these lists. So those are the number one, we got all those paperwork. And then, you know, after all the meetings, after all the changes, AD also needs to prepare for uh, a prep schedule and shooting schedule. So prep schedule is basically just uh, just a schedule on when do we do these meetings, when do we scout, and that changes on a day-to-day -day basis. And then at the same time, we're also working on the shooting schedule, and that's going to change too. And the shooting schedule, that's the, that's the, the set bible. That's uh, hopefully, yeah, it's, it's going to change a few times. Hopefully it doesn't change too many times, uh, especially after we, we lock it down and then we release it. But usually you would, you know, I would do the first schedule as in like the perfect scenario, like pretend everybody's available all the time. The sets are available all the time and you know, nothing's ever going to change. When you're breaking down a script uh, and getting a shooting schedule, what are you scheduling? Well, the first pass is often the ideal situation. So that means we shoot according to the continuity of the story as close as we can. You know, of course, we still need to group the uh, locations together. And then we're pretending none of the actors are available all the time. So, so then the production would use that and they would basically create their budget and then saying that this movie will be shot in 30 days. And they'll probably budget for 35 days because there's always going to be changes later on. So let's look at one of the movies you did, The Bravest. So The Bravest is, this is about Chinese firefighters and they're, they're in China or they're in Hong Kong? They're in China. So Chinese firefighters, massive inferno, kind of like a remake of backdraft type film. What is it that you're doing as an AD to break this script down? to get it ready for a shooting schedule. So The Bravest is, uh, is, is a really good example. It's because we shoot chronologically according to okay. the script. Really? Yeah, because it is a, it is a fire happening in, uh, in these oil, containing, oil containments. So basically we had this huge outdoor set built to be burned. To be okay. eventually blow up and <laughs> okay. you know, everything's like down to nothing. And once you, I'm assuming, once you blow this thing up, you're done. That's there, it. You, you, that, you exactly. don't get to blow it up twice, right? That's why it has to be shot chronologically. Got it. So okay. then we started with you know a clean, everything's functional set, and then we I think it was uh, four or five stages of uh, destruction. So then, so that means between destruction, between the stages, the art department will have to come in and reconstruct, rebuild, reset up all of the, all the set pieces. So for example, stage one, it was just clean. And then we go into stage two and then stage two ends at an explosion, explosion number one. So after explosion number one, the art department will have, will need a week 
to dress up the set for the expo for part two of the expo. And, that, and that's just art department. I'm guessing maybe no actors, no director. It's just it's mostly art department. That movie is very heavy. Yeah. So during that week, well, we will do the exteriors. So we will go to you know these firefighters' uh, houses. You know, talk about their their back you know the backstories and their relationship with their wife. La 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 la. 10 days later. So that's other, other parts of the script are going on while you're shooting that, while art department's working on set A and getting the next big explosion. Exactly. Ready. Exactly. So you got two, two units. Well, it's the same unit. The same it's, a, it's a single unit. Oh, single unit. Okay. But the art department, yeah, their construction team stays on that, in, on that set. And there were times that we actually, you know, we were actually on location in a different city. So we're gone for 10 to 12 days while they're constructing the second part of the of the show which makes sense if you're going to blow something up it's got to be somewhere far away from people i'm guessing <laughs> exactly exactly so so that movie is uh really heavy on scheduling schedules must be you know they must be done in a pretty uh, quite a detail type of situation for all of, so we're not wasting any time and i'm and i'm guessing since it's fire it's a lot of nights it's a lot of overnights yeah it's a lot of overnights you know it's, it's a lot of problem there because uh, we're shot in near Beijing, which freezes at night in the winter. Oh jeez! So it's it'll be kind of it's kind of funny that we go into the we go onto set every morning. And we have to unfreeze the water first because it's all frozen. <laughs> and then you know we try many we try many methods. We put salt in the water. Uh -huh. You know it's all basically salt water. It still freezes overnight. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that that that's something not a lot of people think about when you're doing an international production. Is you're in and, and it's a firefighter movie, so the main character is fire and water, and your water freezes overnight. Freezes overnight, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's tough on everybody, because it's really cold, and, and you turn the fire on, it's super hot, and you turn it off, it's, you're sweaty right away, and then you just, it's you know, a lot of health issues, people get sick and stuff. As an AD, what else are you looking at besides, you know, with this film, like you're talking about, you've got people being, possibly getting sick, fire frozen water, travel as an AD, what else are you looking at to manage the set to keep everybody happy? What is it that you're looking to do or what is it you're, you're, you're looking to have people do to you know, keep the set moving? Uh, a lot of communication, really just to find out, you know, the safety, find out how long each thing take. And then when we're, on, when we're there, when we're working, we're not sitting around with nothing to do. And people are tired. They feel like there's something to do. They, you know, their morale goes down. Yeah, those overnight shoots are, you know, two days on overnights, and you're you're already angry and upset and want to go home. Yeah, you want to go home. I I wanted to go home, and you know, I wanna, but you know, I wanna finish the what we're supposed to do first. So it's yeah, it's a lot of communication basically with every department. Find out from uh, the uh, special effects how long they're gonna take and. You know, make sure everybody's safe. We all stay you know, where the direction of the fire is gonna be, where the explosion is gonna be. What's the safe? What's the safe part of the set that everybody should stay in? That for that particular movie, it was all about safety. That, yeah, that makes sense. Cause I mean, uh, I mean, I'm gonna, I want to post this trailer. Cause this, I mean, this looks like you know a major multi million dollar film. It looks great. It turned out quite quite well, I think. Our department created all these images for us, and then we, we did a really good job recreating those images that the, the director had in mind before we uh, shot the film. So for prep, what, what's, what's an important thing that uh, assistant directors really need to be aware of? What do they need to accomplish? The, uh, the communication. Again, it goes back to communication. is to make sure everybody is aware of the end result. And that is, that is, not, that is something that everybody's agreed on. So we, we, you know, we went through the prep, we did the breakdown, we, did all, we had all those meetings, and at the end of the, end of the process, everybody gets the same, you know, get on the same page, knowing on scene two, this is what's involved, and we all agree on, on the, the, uh, the result. Because like you said, it's a human body, so it, like a human body, you've got the director knows what's going to happen, the actors knows what's going to happen, Props have got everything on standby. Costume, hair and makeup, the ADs, uh, you know, special effects, stunt. Everybody should know that's the scene we're gonna do. This is what we, this is what we need. 
And that's the, that's the day we're going to do that. Which is always, you know, that to me is always one of the most fascinating things when you visit a set and when you're lucky enough to work on a set is just how in agreement when it comes time to shoot, everybody is like, boom, locked in, ready to go. Even if it's a boring setup, everybody is in agreement. This is what we're doing. Let's move forward. Okay, we got it. Move on. Yeah, when that happens, it's a beautiful thing. And it's fast and it's efficient. And then everybody gets to go home happy and, and have the, you know, get to rest. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is one of those again it's always funny people forget that like you're making movies but you, you spend your entire career trying to get on set and your entire day on set trying to get get done and go home that's my motivation <laughs> the second i get on set i want to leave but i also want to get it done before i leave so let's get it done you know let's get it done good we talked about prep but now you're on set as an AD, your job becomes far more intense. I mean, you know, one of the things that you learn uh, as you're working in film is it's the AD's set. He runs the show. You have the directors, you have the actors, you have all these egos. But the person running the set is you, the assistant director. Talk to me about day one on that set, what it is you did as an AD to get that film going. So Bravest is a good example on, on a set running quite well. Uh, so during the prep, we're, we're pretty clear on what's happening in every, in every set, every scene. Um, you, know, the, you know, the lead starts from the door, he go, he moving through the crowd, he goes into this direction, and then he would talk to somebody else. So we, we, we're, pretty, we're quite clear on that. Every, in every scene, uh, you know, all the sets, we, we understand. So on the day, uh, we would go and then we will block it and very quickly get into shooting. Like we said before, uh, there was a lot of night scenes. So a typical day would start around 5 o'clock when it's still relatively light, bright. It, 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 gets, it gets dark around 7 o'clock. So 5 o'clock, we're on set, we're getting set up, and then we go into blocking around uh, 6. Oh, that is quick. That's really yeah, quick. So one hour, yeah, one, it's about one hour. We go into, you know, we get all the firefighters in here. We're blocking in. The cameras are, I would say, probably 70% ready at the time. Was this a one camera shoot or? No, it's multi-camera. Multi-cam? Okay, it's makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So then we'll block in, in about an hour because there's a lot of props, like all the, the hoses, the cars. So first of all, ADs need time to bring in the cars, make sure the car is in the right spot. And then we, we had to kind of line up the hoses. So the ADs and the, and the props would do the, the trucks, the hoses. We went down, we, come, we bring the firefighters in for blocking. And then it gets dark and then we shoot first thing. Like we were going to dinner. You're talking about cars and stuff. And it's always funny how something as simple as moving a car takes sometimes the most amount of time to get a car moved. Oh yeah, it, it, it's, it's you know, a big object like that requires a lot of time to maneuver and put it in the right spot. And especially on the Bravest where there's explosions and you're leaving like a huge ditch or there's like a big set piece that you can't really move the trucks around. So it's a, it's a bit of a strategy to, to understand how, what's the good entrance point and if do we need to get it out by the end of the day or can we leave it there? Most of the time we leave it there. Right, because that, that's something a lot of people forget too is if you want to move a truck, it costs money to move it in and it costs mm -hmm. money to move it out. To get it out. Yeah. It's a lot, yeah. It's a big, you know, big, big objects, big props, big animals like horses, like all that you have to think of had, how are you going to move them around? And do you need a place to store them? Do they need a place to rest? Is it, gonna, it, is it somewhere else? And now, if it's somewhere else, how long does it take to, for you to bring that in? Do we, do we actually really, really need to see them move? Or can they just stand there? <laughs> exactly. So that's like a, a lot of conversation between departments. You talk, about, you talk about it with the director. You talk about it with the DP. Can you blur the background? Can you shoot it compress? So you don't care if it's kind of ugly there, or do I need to get the you know, art department to come and dress up again? So that, those are the questions you ask, you know, hopefully before we shoot, but sometimes on the day when things start to move very quickly. 
Well, that I mean, that sounds I mean, that sounds like a lot of creative decisions that your experience through the years are really helping you with. You're talking about shooting this long lens, meaning the background just becomes color washes as opposed to very fine detail. What are those tricks that you're learning or or what is it that you're trying to keep aware of as you're working as an AD that you need to always kind of have in your bag of tricks, so to speak, to make your day more efficient? You, you know, you still need to discuss it with the director first. So it's, you know, there, there are these tricks to hide or these to, you know, to, to uh, cut corners, if you, if you will. But, you know, you need to go back to the basics. You, you need to figure out what we're trying to see on, on, the, on the shot, on, on the screen. After you've completed your first setup, what's the next step for you? The, basically, there are three steps when we when we are when we block every single shot and you just kind of repeat the same process over and over again so you have the blocking that's number one you block with cast because if assuming we're not doing stunts so you block with cast and then cast goes away camera and lighting comes back and grips come in so the second step the uh the tech crew and then and then we rehearse with cast and camera, step three. And then you just kind of repeat in the process, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that, that sounds easy, but you know, on a, on a day, not every, every setup is quick and easy. With some of those longer setups, what is it that you're communicating with the different departments with to find out when you're gonna shoot? Like how long camera works or, or props or things like that. What is it you're, what information are you looking to get from those departments for those next setups to make your day? You know, we're trying to look for the most efficient time in all of it. So then I need to figure out what, what department takes what time. For example, if an actor takes one hour, so now I know it's one hour. And then, so what am I going to do during that hour? That hour is going to be spent on uh, casting hair and makeup, on maybe we could, on lighting, on grips, on the, you know, maybe we have a techno crane trying to set up. That, so I need to figure out what am I going to do in those hours where I lost my actor. Or, or maybe I shoot something else, you know, shooting a colorway, shooting a you know, hot fire, for example, some kind of small... A uh, small thing that I could use a double. Every hour's got to be filled. You can't just sit around. Exactly. Waiting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it is, it is a process of kind of one, two, three, four. But if one takes too long, I need to figure something out to use the time. So I'm not just waiting for it, one to finish so I could get to two. You, you're doing those one, two, three, four setups. How are you keeping the crew and the cast and everything moving? We go back to communication. It's, I think people understand, when they understand how long, what are they waiting for, is that's what's going to keep them on the same page as you. Okay. So I, what I do is I, I like to constantly talk on my, on my, uh, on my radio okay. on, the, on channel one. And I say... Okay, uh, this is what's happening, and this is how long it's going to take. So we're waiting for 30 minutes, and then and, and every 10 minutes I, w I, would, I would update. So everybody's aware of what's happening, and what, why are we not shooting, or if we're shooting, what are we shooting, and what are we shooting next? That is still one of my favorite questions you always hear on set, other than when's lunch is why are we not shooting? Exactly. And so you need to keep you know, people satisfied in a way, so, so they understand what's happening, they're here to work and people do want to work. They want to work, they want to do a good job. And if there's something that's you know, stopping them from doing that, they need to know why am I not working. What, what makes some of these international films a little different than your experience on uh, more Western or, or Hollywood style films, so to speak? Well, it's, you know, we're making movies, we're making films. It's, it's essentially, we're all doing the same thing. It's like we're traveling to the same destination, but you know, you and I take different routes or we take different vehicles. Uh, so the results are the same, but how we get there is a little bit different. So they're all kind of the same jobs, you know, the production, the camera, the art department, but they're kind of positioned differently. 
Right. And there's different rules between the Hollywood system and the Western system and then working in China or working in Paris or, or working in Dubai. You know, you've got to be cognizant of all the different local rules and regulations, union, non-union, right? That's the first thing I do is uh, when I go into the, you know, when I start working in a foreign country, that's, that's the first thing I ask is, do you guys have unions here? What are the rules? What do I need to be aware of? There's a there's a, an actors unions, there's crew unions, uh, you know, there's uh, some of them just use uh, labor laws, uh, you know. They, so that's those are things uh, AD needs to be aware of because we because we're scheduling, we schedule shoot days, we schedule prep days, and we need to be we need to be aware of those things. What are some of the differences in working with? or working in locations that already have a thriving, existing film industry? What is it that you're doing to make production work? Well, first of all, you need to respect the local rules and regulations. So first of all, you find out, you know, if there are unions, uh, what are their, or if, what are their labor laws, um, you know, and, and don't try to change that. You know, like, I mean, we're talking about like the French hour, right? The French, but the French hour in France is actually nine hours plus one hour lunch. Oh, geez, that's a lot. It's shorter. not ten hour with walking. Like in in the United States and Canada, the French hour is we skip lunch and we walk around in our sandwiches. Right, the walking and lunch. We work ten hours straight. Yeah, we work ten hours straight. Over there is sit down one hour. You work nine hour. And you know, coming from a Chinese film, they're used to do a minimum of twelve to thirteen hour a day with 30 minute lunch, right? So no matter where you are, don't, don't fight it. I think it's, it's, you know, you gotta respect the culture. That is the way you do it. So what are you thinking about when you're making these, you know, big company moves? You're moving a small city of your production around. What are some of the things you wanna think about as an AD when you're going from international location to international location? Well, it's something I will already know during the prep, during the prep time. And uh, for big shows like that, uh, you would stay good communication with the uh, production departments from the other city. So you would be talking about it months ahead of the time. And, uh, you know, so then they have the time zone issue. Uh, but now you look at it this way. It could be a problem because whatever you want to say, you can say it to them right away. But also you could use it to your advantage, as in if you, if you know your stuff and then you have give a really good, a good direct answer and direction, then they, accom they could accomplish that while you're asleep. So that's, why, that's sort of what I kind of figured out is if I tell, you know, for example, the, the, you know, the, my, the AD that's going to work with me in uh, uh, whatever, in uh, Dubai, if I give him information ahead of time, then he could get that all completed when I wake up, like, hey, can you check out this other location? Do they have da 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 da? And then he could get it all done. So you, you could be on set in Beijing and, and Dubai is what, eight hours difference or? Something like that. Ten, okay, so I'm all, a good half day and you're, you're thinking about another location in time and they can be working while you're working in Beijing and essentially be ready to go. Exactly, essentially that's what it is. So what, what it's not going to help you is if you do everything last minute, then, it's, then the communication is slow. If all of a sudden you say, hey, can you get this? Can I get that? Then he's not going to get that information eight hours later. So it's really up to you as an AD to, to uh, think ahead and then use that to your advantage. And then when you get there, you already have a good idea on what's happening. And then, you know, of course, you ask a lot of questions and and figure, figure out these uh, unique situations in each uh, location. Tell me, I mean, you know, when you're on set and you're, you're, you're bringing crew on and you're, you're, you're hiring PAs, because that's who's going to work with you first, what is it you want PAs and the people you're hiring to help you, what do you want them to be thinking about? What's the attitude you want from them? And this will be kind of our wrap up. So we'll kind of, so let's give it a nice heavy duty, nice philosophical or a good, good, clean um, way to think. Well, I, I guess that goes to kind of like the work attitude of uh, ADs. So this is what I think. Uh, I think ADs should be confident. 
they should be confident. They should be aware. You know, like understand what you know. Don't come in like, you know, just expecting people to tell you th stuff. You should be really trying to to see, to observe, and then to you know, to just to be aware of your surroundings. What every what other departments are doing. If there are, you know, that doesn't matter if it's related to you. You're not costume, but you should still understand. And that's and really, AD department is the only department that we sort of have to have an understand of understanding of every department, their needs, what are they require, and what are they, you know, do they drink coffee in the morning or do they drink coffee at night? Or it's it's you need to understand that, and then you also need to be. Uh, uh, approachable. Mm, that's that's a tough one for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, but you need to be approachable because people need to talk to you. You need to talk to them. You know, so don't come in like, like. Uh, I mean, some I I know some ads. They they would come in kind of like they're the boss. You know, you listen to what I tell you. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Don't ask questions. I don't. I personally don't quite agree with that kind of style of working. Of course, everybody works differently. This is a kind of a people's industry. Uh, but yeah, I think AD should be approachable, uh, you know, just easy to talk to. Because that's all you do. All you do is talk. <laughs> so talk a, a, a walkie-talkie and a good pair of shoes and a good attitude. And three batteries. Yeah. <laughs> three batteries. <laughs> Remember, not one, not two, but three batteries. Always have an extra backup for your backup. Thank you for listening to this episode of Creative Mind. I'm your host, Bobby Brill. And just a reminder that as more and more art and design career opportunities arise and film production is getting back in swing around the world, employers are always on the hunt for the next generation of talented and skilled creative professionals. And here at Academy of Art University, you will get those work-ready skills that employers want study on site in downtown San Francisco or anywhere in the world with our online programs. To request info about any of our 40 plus areas of study in art and design, including film production, photography, UX design, game development, and more, just visit our website at academyart.edu slash creative mind. Thanks for listening.